Hello, this is Take What Rings True, and today I'm going to be talking about angels. My name is Teresa Migaletti, and I've been collecting spiritual philosophy for decades, and lately I've been working with angels directly and in groups. So I want to talk to you about angels. When you come to life on earth, you come with a spirit guide who has lived a life before, and you also come with your personal angel. Your personal angel is always with you, always watching out for you, never leaves you. If you astrally project or you're sleeping, then they're taking care of you. If you astrally project, you are leaving your body and your angel makes sure you're still breathing. Make sure that all your bodily functions are still working so when your spirit gets back in, you're fine. Which reminds me, sometimes you consciously wake up before your spirit um, gets all the way in and that's when you're like sort of frozen and you wake up and you're like, I can't move, I can't move. It's okay. It's just you're getting your spirit back in your body. So, angels. Angels are part of creation and take what rings true. If I say something that doesn't agree with your truth, fine, let it go, let it drop away. So angels are part of God's creation and they're here to help us in many ways, but you have to give them permission. So if you want an angel to heal you, you need to say that you want them to heal you. Don't just say, help me, help you what? And be specific. Every single time they help you, they need your permission. So today, if you ask them for healing, then tomorrow you need to ask them for healing and you need to give them permission to enter your body. Your body is sacrosanct. You have a protective privacy clause on your body. And no one can interfere with your body unless you give permission. So if you have, um, say, a court case or a child protective case, you can call on angels and tell them specifically what you want them to do. How do you want them to help you? Be very specific. Let's go through the phylums of angels for Earth because there's different kinds of angels in different places and different dimensions. We have our protective angels who are always with us. And you can address your personal angel with any fears, any phobias, and ask them to help you with those. Archangels. And these are like steps up the ladder of angels. Increasing power. Archangels are messengers for you and God and bring hope and heal when they are asked to heal. Often they'll surround you with their wings and heal you. They'll also enter your body to help you if you give them permission. There are two singing angels. There's cherubim and seraphim. I know you've probably heard of cherubim. They are the joyful angels. And if you need help sleeping, then ask for a cherubim angel. They also bring you joy and they can heal with their music. There are seraphim angels who are singers also and help you remember dreams and heal with music. So I need to call on seraphim angels because I've been having trouble remembering my dreams. Powers angels. Powers angels are um, Angels that also heal and bring peace. If you want peace of mind, call on a powers angel. Carrions. Carrions are angels that will protect you from afar, but mainly they take away um, entities, beings that are um, harmful or dark. If you saw the movie Ghost, the bad guy um, is killed and the angels or the beings take him away quickly. That would be carrion angels. 
virtues. Virtue angels help you with your life chart. Before you came into life, you incarnate with a chart, which is all the big things you want to happen. You want to uh, go to high school. You want to go to college, but you want a little blip in college. And uh, you flunk your physics class and your chemistry class, and you have to repeat them um, to see what that's like. And the reason you do that is because we were created by God to experience for God, who knows all, our Father God knows all, but has not experienced everything. So we write charts to experience for him and for ourselves. We're perfecting, becoming more God-like, more perfect. And we feed the information back to him. So Father God is always watching and helping us. In fact, God gives you infusion every day, which means there's this sparkly, usually rainbow cloud that comes over you, and God gives you information. The angels can't hear it. Your spirit guides can't hear it. It's private. So um, virtues help you with your chart. Virtues, angels help you with your chart before you incarnate, before you come into life, and they can also help you modify your chart. So if you're having an illness, and maybe you charted to have that illness for a very long time, you can appeal to virtues angels to help modify your chart. Okay. I don't think that's right. I think the virtues can modify your chart just before you come into life. So I retract that. The virtues angel. So say you're coming into life and you're going to be a professor. They can ask you at the last minute, hey, don't you want some more intellectual points? Don't you want to have an IQ of 160 instead of 120? And they can modify your chart at that point in time. If you want to modify your chart in this life, the one you would appeal to would be the mother goddess, and we call her Asna, but you can call her Sophia, you can call her whatever you want. But you would um, appeal to the feminine side of God and ask her to change your chart. Okay, dominions. Let's record your good deeds and answer guides questions about our charts. So you have a spirit guide that's always helping you and guiding you. I always think of uh, the GPS tracker in your car or Google Earth when you're trying to find someplace and it says to make a right-hand turn and you're in the wrong lane. So it will very kindly say two blocks up, please turn to the right or turn to the left, turn to the left, turn to the left, whatever it is, they'll get you back on track. So another set of angels are called thrones. Thrones are the angels of the mother goddess. They carry swords and they fight negativity and banish darkness. Principalities are father God's angels and we know that Father God's name is Om. You know, when people uh, meditate, a lot of times they'll say that. I don't know that they know that that's the name of God. But he goes by other names too. Principalities carry golden spears and they emanate protection. All the angels emanate love. And most of them concentrate on emanating joy especially the singers, the seraphim and the cherubim. The archangels will bring in joy and the powers angels will bring in joy. So if they're healing you, powers angels or archangels, they'll bring in joy as well as healing. A lot of times we don't pay attention to it. So it would be nice if you would stop a little bit during the day and think, okay, I would like angels to be around me. You can circle yourself with angels. That's another thing. Angels are just waiting 
for you to ask them to help. They need your permission. There's lots of angels. You can't ask for too many angels. So you could have a circle of angels around you at night to protect you and keep away bad dreams. You could have um, angels protecting you when you walk. You can have angels protecting your kids. You can have angels protecting your loved ones. And be sure to be specific on what kind of help you want to give people, what kind of help you want. So say you have a court case or you have a difficult situation and things are just not working out, then tell the angels exactly what you want them to do. You want them to um, take away all the blocks in your path. You want them to facilitate you um, getting through this court case. I remember one time I was uh, helping my uncle who was being taken advantage of by his caretakers and I was in court and I asked for angels to be with me. I also asked for purple light to be around people's heads because purple light is the frequency of energy to help people be truthful and to be spiritual. So when you're dealing with people that you want to be truthful, you would ask for purple light to be around their head. But I asked for angels to be with me. And that court case went very well, and people told the truth. So asking the angels to help facilitate um, the court case and getting things taken care of for my uncle, then um, the caretakers were, the truth came out about the caretakers, and um, the judge even said that it was good that I had um, filed a case, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Anyway, it works out better if you call on the angels, but you need to be specific in what you want them to do. So there are the angels that I just talked about, but in other places there are also other angels. Right now we're going to um, this new dimension, and we have beginning angels because it's a new creation. And the beginning angels arrive when there's some kind of new creation. So other planets have other angels. Other dimensions have other angels. Which we usually aren't concerned with because they usually don't come to Earth. But it's possible you would see other angels. I've actually seen angels. When I had a significant birthday one time, I woke up and there were angels all around my room just like flanking every wall. Usually you don't see angels, but we're going to start seeing more angels because of the shift in energy happening right now. I tend to be more intellectual than emotional. And often I have kept my spirit guides and my angels at arm's length. I ask for their help, but I don't always pay attention to them. And yesterday I had a session um, with angels and angels came in and my spirit guides came in and explained that I had been keeping them at arm's length because in a past life, yes, I believe in past lives. In a past life, I had had a life of deep despair, which is what I wrote in my chart. I wanted to experience deep despair. So I was upset with the angels and I was upset with spirit guides and angry with them and talking to them and saying, why aren't you helping me? Well, it's because they were true to helping me with my chart. Angels enact your path. So I want to be in deep despair. Then they would arrange for experiences or make sure that I had the experience that I wanted, they put those things in place. And it's my choice how I react to them. And I feed that information back to Father God when I'm experiencing. Things like keeping that idea of uh, not liking the angels or not appreciating the angels and the spirit guides was affecting me in my current life. Let me back up a little bit. 
there are two kinds of memories that are spiritual. One is cell memory and one is morphic resonance. So cell memory, as soon as you come into life, some um, memories just flood your cells and stay there. Other times, a specific incident or a specific uh, experience in a past life will get triggered. Say when you were 25, <clears throat> you fell off a bridge. So when you're 25 in this life and you start to go across a bridge, you may feel like, no, I can't go across bridges. I just can't go across bridges. And all of a sudden, you're not able to cross bridges. That's called morphic resonance. Also, some explained illness is because people are carrying it from a past life. So say um, you fell in a past life and it was a wagon and the wagon turned over and hit your shoulder. And in this life, you have shoulder pain that's unexplained. It's because it's resonance, it's cell memory from a past life. So you can let that go by working with angels, you can let that go by um, going to a hypnotist. Often I have clients that come to me and have unexplained illnesses or unexplained pains. And it's because of a past life experience. And you can let that go. If you know about it, you can let it go. So yesterday when I was working with the angels, they were helping me let go of the anger and the upset. I had even in my dreams called my angels rowdy and my spirit guides rowdy because I didn't appreciate them in a past life. And that memory was being held within me. It's like a, you have these little nuggets. You protect yourself by like, wrapping that up in a bubble and keeping it within you. And then when you come into life again, those memories flood into you and you don't realize that you're holding them and it's affecting your current life. So call on angels, ask them to help you and be very specific. If you find that you're keeping your angels at arm's length, maybe there's a reason for it. So. Call on the angels. They are lovely. They love to bring you joy. They love to bring you love. They are especially good at getting rid of the secret little hidden things that you have, your memories that you don't need anymore. So they're good about letting go of unneeded memories. They're also good about helping you to raise your vibration if you're doing a meditation or some kind of uh, just practice of raising your vibration. They can help you with that. So call on the angels. Think about what you would like them to do and be very specific. Don't do everything at once, but okay, if you want to be healed, then ask for archangels or powers angels, or just ask your personal angel to send whatever angel is needed for whatever purpose you need. If you're going to court or you're having difficulty with a contract or you're having difficulty with a person, then call on angels to help you with that. But be specific. What do you want help with? It's amazing. I have found it so amazing working with angels. They are so helpful and so loving and so joyful. Call on them. Just experiment and call on them. You will be amazed. So if you have questions, put them in the chat, which I can't see right now. And next time, maybe I'll talk about spirit guides. So it's been nice seeing you. And I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye.